Hello, Evinia. Nickelboy Blue here, bringing you another game on the Coliseum ANS versus OSP. In the blue trunks, we've got Party, Vastal, Das, and Sunflower Girl. In the orange trunks on the OSP side, we've got Spadicey, Scalord, Math Blob, and Mini. We're dropping in here on Tombstones. Going to be a 1,000 point game. Going to see a lot of violence here, expecting many small ships from the OSP side, many capitals from the ANS side. Still not sure what we're going to have quite yet as the teams are just finalizing their deployments, seeing quite a few orange arrows and blue arrows as they are picking which location they want to best set themselves up to establish a lead in this game. As you might notice uh, some similar tags here. Three of the OSP players decided to run the Grummy tag, so we're going to have a wonderful time trying to discriminate which of those fleets belong to who. <laughs> Over here now. Looks like we're just finishing off picking the last of these locations for the OSP team. They've got most of their assets set up. Blue side still waiting to lock in there. We'll get the game underway as soon as both teams are ready. Um, those of you who are not familiar, Tombstones is a map quite similar to Pillars. You've got two natural points per team set up with a bit of verticality to them and then a neutral A point a little bit higher up than the Pillars A, which is kind of near the floor of the map there. Expecting a lot of violence in the close quarters area around the A point. Typically see a shuttle or corvette or two sent there just to keep the enemy team honest, making sure that they are covering that point. <laughs> Seeing the initial chirping going on there. Nice to see the community coming out. Speaking of community, we are joined by many a spectator here on the Coliseum who will be trying to catch things that I am not quite able to see as there's only one camera perspective from my little cat boy eyes. Teams are now locked in as party has been the first to ready up. We're going to see what they all bring to bear as we're going to get this initial drop and rollout as we'll go through the fleets and then see what violence prevails. Just waiting on party who should ready up any second now as they're just picking their last final locations, deciding where they best want to censor awareness, assets, and capitals. There we go. Let's see what we get on the deploy screen now. Coming in, we're going to see a bulk freighter of the 250 millimeter variety. Ooh, a combination of 250 and 450. Interesting little hybrid there. You can double up on your calibers here using buff modules of the ammo elevator and rapid cycle cradle flavors. Let's take a look at what we got right here coming in from Mini. We got a 450-250 combo. And over here we've got another one of these. And rounding out the fleet is going to be a third one. Interesting little tech coming in here using the two calibers. Possibly to see what they can tax on the capital and then smaller ship class. Let's see, Math Blob coming in with the numbers 10 ship fleet here. We've got multi mission tug, multi mission tug, multi mission, multi mission, and then lastly a torpedo tug and then a mine layer. Wait, there's one more. Oh, two mine layers there. Most likely going to be covering the natural points with 10 sprint mines if I had to guess. Let's check the ammo counts on these. Yep, standard affair there. Rounding out the rest of their fleet, they've got little T20 capping shuttles and dip three of them. Let's see what Scalard's brought to bear. Let's see a jamming tug here escorting, it looks like a monitor blob, seeing some T-30s and C-90s on the nose of these things. Nice little fleet there. Has some plasma included as well to strip off enemy armor. Eight plasma turrets is a good amount to peel the front side of an Axford. Let's see, Spadicey coming in down here with, looks like a 250 broadsider with some Enemies containers on the backpack. A couple of decoy containers there, many of them actually. We saw, was that eight decoys across two ships? That's 16 in total. That's going to be playing hell on the Intel awareness side for ANS. Running out, they've got, looks like a little torpedo tug here with a C-53 to finish off ships. And joining it is going to be a second one of the same. T-20s on one shuttle and then just two naked cappers here with a little chaff box. Most likely ceremonial arming missile. Yep, you can see that. Let's take a look around the map here. All right, we're going to see some things here. We'll just take a moment here. <laughs> so let's go see what the ANS have brought to counter all of this. We're going to see from DOS, looks like a CL, pretty standard fare here, has a bullseye on the top slot in that last one. 250 CLs here, just yep, pretty standard 3,000 points of CL there. Coming in here from party, we've got a single beam destroyer and another one set apart to cover the natural points here. I'm going to see a couple of Pinard Corvettes kicking around the battle space's edges, trying to hunt for those early warning radars from the OSB side. 
One torpedo corvette going for the C point, another one going for the B point, securing the naturals there. More torpedo corvettes running around the map. Looks like one of them making a dive for the A point, trying for that initial rollout. Sunflower here is bringing out, let's see, we've got, it looks like fairly standard 450 axe. We're just going to check these for track correlators. See if one is, nope, that is a spyglass. And this one over here is going to be ammo elevators with a couple of mount gyros. All right, so looking to play around that kind of medium range rather than the long range shore bombardment you see with a correlated spyglass. Vastal is going to round out the fleet here with looks like mass VLS-2. Are these hybrids or standard mass size 2 missiles here? This is going to be some interesting rain coming in. All right. Let's see, not quite their whip dragon. Oh, okay. Let's have a look just at the drive setup. So drive setup is a little bit of personal choice depending on what you want to go for. Dragonfly drive providing a bit of maneuverability in the turning department versus whiplash drive. You see that top speed. No raider, meaning these will not accelerate the fastest, but they can turn pretty decently. The enemy is All right. A point is going to be the initial rollout play here made by party. We're going to see if these are punished or not, depending on what the OSB has to bring to bear. That is going to be the first opening salvo as a bunch of Hesh plasma. Yep, just the entire arsenal opening up now is a sacrificial torpedo corvette is going to be shredded here in a moment once all these shots start landing. Seeing a couple of them either missing or overpenning their light damage being issued. Now they're starting to land some serious hits. The drive goes out. That's going to be a very dead corvette. We'll see if it is able to limp itself away uh, most likely just going to be sacrificed here. Nope, not going to have any chance of recovering on this front. Just continuous fire. The question is, do they get the cap point or not? That can dictate the initial rollout of this game. Here comes the second volley of grape shot and some more Hesh rounds. Going to be close here. A point almost secured by ANS. OSP is doing the right play of just punishing anything they can with oppressive fire, but just barely holding on here. Auxiliary steering is keeping this thing in the fight along with the micro reactor here. We're going to see... Oh, no... Oh, that is very close there. So just able to knock out that ox steering at the last second, denying the A cap there like they want to see. That could have dictated a lot of the plays there as securing that A point would force the OSB to attempt a retake or push into another area. This does give the ANS team a lot of information about what kind of forces are positioned where just by the various firings that we saw there. You see a whole bunch of 450, 250 and bombshells going off. That tells you quite a bit about the enemy fleet even before you identify them. I'm going to see a couple of missiles sent out here. Let's take a look at these pathing. Looks like they're trying to keep things honest. Going under the map here, they're going to be firing towards Spadice's bulk freighters down here. Missile camera will rat out the loaders of these bulkers in a second. Let's see where these missiles are coming down on. We're seeing some decoy containers being launched here, attempting to seduce some of these missiles along with the chaff clouds. That said, we'll see just how many of these are deflected. No point defense turrets firing. Last second turn, though, going after that decoy container. Like I said, being very good at its role. It's kind of like a cheaper active decoy in a weird way. And it's having trouble. Lots of air denial from OSB behind on points. Yep, they are slightly behind, which means that it is their turn in the initiative order, so to speak, to secure themselves a point lead. You can see what Vostal is able to clean up with some of these missiles hunting around the battle space. We see a bunch of these container decoy line ships being sent around now, trying to keep the ANS team guessing. Missiles being sent out here. I believe that those were, yeah, just unfortunately path a little bit wrong here. Possibly was just trying to whip a shot against this shuttle that may or may not have been there, potentially going for the A point. That A point going to be kept neutral. We see now the sprint mine just being deployed here. Nice little 10 mine cluster of sprints. This is a good way of protecting your natural. Just make sure you keep your comms on, otherwise they will friendly fire you. I'm gonna see Scalord moving around the edge of the map here now. It looks like a couple of things from Math Blob here trying to hunt some of the Intel awareness assets. Party gonna get taxed here in a second. There's no point defense on no actually this is a torpedo corvette, so it does have some defense. We'll see if these size two weaves will break through or not. I see now a couple of AMMs being fired off. That is a good volley of AMM gonna be countering most of this missile volley along with the defender. See, yep, successful deflection there, so they will have to send their second volley. Multi-mission tugs typically only coming with a payload of eight missiles, so that's two batches of four. A whole bunch of decoys and whatnot. That's a very loaded sprinter right there, party. Hmm. Not much to say, really, as both teams just kind of put their heads together and trying to come up with a plan about how to play and how to punish. You're going to see party just kind of moving around the area up top here now as multiple assets are going to be moving out to punish. Yeah, Math Blob guarding the top of the map, realizing the threat that this could potentially pose with a bomber wing coming over the top of the map and then striking down. We're seeing our first torpedo, a ARAD Axe, going to be trying to punish the enemy here, would lock onto a jammer or uh, other radar emissions. You see this thing lazily spiraling towards the multi-mission tug here, this trying to fire AMMs. AMM's unfortunately not very good against a torpedo like this. We might see our first hit of the game. No, at the last second is going to veer off going for the chaff cloud. Good emissions control there, turning off their radar to make that ARAD seeker no longer valid. 
the, the top of the map continues its skirmishing. We're seeing some more size twos being thrown towards Spadicey here. Vastal coming out to play with these, what well, these acts? Arad Validate in type. All right, so Arad Validators do have memory, meaning that if they detect the enemy's radar emissions, they will remember that and focus fire them down. I see now if they go after these container decoys once again, using these akin to uh, the active decoy on the ANS side has been proving very useful so far as we see all of these missiles now going after them. We're going to see a couple collide there and the other ones just whiz off. So another volley deflected. One of them going to maybe find its way home. Yep. Minor damage there, just tickling a couple of the systems. Pinpoint radar and C-56 take a little bit of damage, but nothing you cannot repair. All right, let's take a look back at the top of the map. So multi-mission tugs versus a torpedo corvette here. Triple multi-mission tug will easily win this, just winning it out with the combination of grape shot and looks like the HE rounds here. Shuttles even coming to contribute a little bit of fire there. So it's going to be probably the second corvette, yes, bled out on the ANS side. Taking a look here as both teams just kind of squaring off, trying to take little engagements where they can. Missile defense has been tested on the OSP side and found not to be, well, not to be vulnerable, but there is a certain number of decoys that you can bring on these ships. We're seeing, I believe most of these have now been expended, only two left of the, like, these are minis bulkers, not spadices, whereas it spadices down here with, yeah, still half of their decoy load has been expended in that. Yep. And as, Thanks to the spectator crowd here for catching the things that I don't. You can come and join us on the Coliseum on weekends. We love doing the stack v stack gaming. Yeah. We're seeing just a bit of a passive play here right now from ANS. They don't quite have the scouting awareness assets to properly identify where the enemy is. And the OSP is set up entirely to punish any kind of aggression or move out since they've got a good amount of awareness through their multi-mission tugs guarding the top side of the map and multiple smaller assets kind of looking around the edges here got bulk freighters positioned fairly equally that said with the dispersion of bulk freighters you can decide to pick a flank and overload it forcing the enemy to rotate onto you however we're currently seeing the main front line for the ans team these axe red pair here just kind of lazily drifting towards the top side of the map they've been hanging out trying to provide a little bit of fire support however due to the intel status of the ans they're not able to identify what is a real line ship and what is not Look around, party's got some beam destroyers. Oop, that is a reactor cook-off at the top of the map here. Gone is party's torpedo corvette. Won't really do much, unfortunately, here. Although I believe that... Oop, okay, it does scorch the outside of a multi-mission tug there. So that will actually be probably the most damage that tug... Or that corvette is going to deal this game. Armor does not matter so much on lighter assets like this, as they have very little to begin with. But if there was something larger like, say, an Acela or Bulk Freighter getting caught in that, it might have some problems. Monitors in particular rely on their armor a lot. 48 centimeters of it, fairly flat facing on the front side. So if you can catch these with a reactor bloom or something similar, then they are suddenly very vulnerable to all of these small caliber guns. Beams are going to go out onto the A point here, denying the first capper. Another one is going to come out and try it here. OSP deciding to take a little bit of pressure on the A side here. I'm just going to see how this will play out. Most likely going to see the beam destroyer here rotate and fire on the other one. Yep, there we go. Burn through has detected the ship. It has minimal radar signature. They just went radar and comms off, trying to keep this thing as small as possible. Less than 2,000. Is that uh, 2,000? Yes, meters squared. Never sure if it's meters squared or meters cubed for the volume, but I was going to see this thing now moving away lazily. Beam Destroyer going to be trying to rotate onto it. Unfortunately, it does not quite have the reach here to hit it. Yeah, that's six kilometer range just at the edge of the A point there. Good position keeping that overwatch. Commentators here are saying that it is going into a bit of a sleepy state as both teams just kind of are chilling for the moment. Points are starting to rack up a little bit. OSP has the slightest lead, so there will have to be a play from ANS at some point. The question is, what do they want to go out and do? You can see the CLs now lurking around the bottom of the map, being jammed by one of Math Blob's multi-mission tugs down here, trying to keep them honest. OSP has very good scouting and awareness, pretty much able to keep the ANS on their side of the map uncontested by anything Experts are firing a couple of shots at whatever they can get eyes on, although it's not really much in this case. I believe that was just fired off against another decoy. Yeah. The number of bricks that are just, like, around the map that ANS has to contend with, although this one is currently hugging a rock, there's still a lot of things that the OSP has to keep track of and quickly figure out whether it is real or not, because if you mistake a decoy for a bulk freighter and waste your fire on it, well, that's no good for anyone. But if you mistake a actual bulk freighter for a decoy, you can be heavily punished, especially with the front-loaded broadsides that they've got loaded into these. Das down at the bottom of the map, trying to clean up one of Mathwab's jammers here. Let's see if the RPF is good or not. Looks like it's just barely at the edge of the range here. If they can knock out that jammer, they should be able to hold a lock here and then punish heavily. Seeing a little T20 shuttle coming out to play. Bulk freighter as well, going for the engagement here. 
Let's see. Uh, yeah, we're just doing a little bit of commentary there. Vastal seeing the situation, testing the waters a little bit, doing the smart thing actually of saving the missiles until they can find a engagement that they can throw them in decisively. Just throwing missiles randomly at enemies when it is the only thing they have to contend with allows them to very easily do emissions control, turning off their radars and whatnot. However, if the enemy is occupied in a fight like we might be seeing develop now, then there will be a little more to worry about in the moment and catch some players lapsing in their micro. Bit of that fire coming in now from Mini's Bulk Freighter. The Onager over here are going to be firing into the Mercy Gone from Das. Going to see a couple of hits landing in here, berthing in the top slot, most likely going to be taken out in a second. Mark 64 cannons going to be firing in return. They do have jamming on them, although they are not currently attempting to use it. Most likely assuming the enemy has a crossfix. There goes the jamming cone, trying to silence this bulk freighter for the moment. Still has its fire orders issued, thanks to the helpful offset radar lock provided by, I believe it's this shuttle over here that has eyes on. Might just barely be out of line of sight. Multi-mission tug for sure, though, has line of sight. Right. Bit of a slow development as the game just kind of is tested in various different directions. Seeing a little bit of fire coming down on to, let's see, what are these Axfords firing on? Ah, okay, so they're getting a bit of a lock over here. Able to detect at the very edge of their range here some um, of this multi-mission tug and monitor ball. All right, so we can see a TRP being used here. You can see the missiles go to this point and then turn. Vastal coming in with the command seeker type, so we're going to see just what is in these. Looks like a whole bunch of, these are the self-screening jammer type, I believe. Normally see the self-screening jammer used in something called a killjoy, a little bit of a defensive measure. However, in this case, it's going to be trying to mess up any AMMs as we're going to see, yep, Mini trying to run around the corner here, hopefully deflecting that volley. Let's see, where are these headed? Uh, these should turn any second now, or were they just fired off in direct fire? Interesting. All right, we're seeing some of these now lazily looping around. Maybe these were just uh, misclicked. Ah, lost the lock. That would do it. Thank you to the spectators for catching what I did not. They're seeing some more follow-up volley being issued here, trying to tax this bulk freighter. Ideally, as a missile player, you make decisive plays and are able to finish off a ship that has been engaged by your gun fleet, or at least set them up to win in that situation. Love to see the support plays coming out in the kind of stack v stack gaming we get. We will be seeing a missile hit here. Wham goes one. Wham goes two. Not the greatest damage here, but still able to take that reactor down a little bit and knock out one of the main thrusters here. So, not the worst, but could have been better. So, entering the standoff phase here, we're continuing. Math Blob pushing across the top of the map, though, looking to pick off what few sensor assets they have on the ANS side. Party Elite over here. Ha uh, not Party Elite. That's an entirely different person. <laughs> Party over here having a uh, bit of a time as their pinards are going to be taxed here by some little 100 mil HE rounds. Let's see, yep. Yeah. No damage control team on this, meaning if a fire is started, then this will be the end of the ship, going maximum greed in this. Have to be playing cheap in certain aspects, as I believe they invested quite a bit into their torpedo corvettes. Multi-mission tugs on the hunt now. Size 2 missiles are out at the top of the map. Not really much else to say, as the game has just kind of entered its standoff phase and stayed there. A little bit of testing being done around the edges of the formations here, trying to see if the enemy is caught lacking. Just a whole lot of nothing, though, as we're just going to watch these missiles fly in. Defender is good, but is it good enough? Size 2's lazily weaving to the sides. AMMs are launched too late. These are going to find their way home. Wham! Right into the reactor, taking out the Defender as well. Follow-up salvo will spell death for the ship. Is attempting to fire off its torpedoes while it can against these multi-mission tugs. We do see a lock on here. Going to see if Math Blob is awake or not able to turn off that radar. Come on, buddy. These are ARAD Act. You can know this. I see it now. Yep. Locks on to... I Ooh, decoys on this hybrid. Never mind. That is not a torpedo. Wham, there we go. All right, so that is going to find its way home into one of the multi-mission tugs, redding out the jammer. Or no, grading out the jammer, redding out the magazine briefly. So. I'm going to see in return, though, a whole bunch of size twos have something to say about it. This ship earlier it lost its defensive measures and is going to heavily suffer for it. Bunch of good hits there. Reinforced, react, or no, reinforced drive will keep this thing alive for the moment, but... We're going to see more hits landing there. CSE completely grayed out. Yeah, can technically restore, but this ship is on borrow time. The 100 mil guns are just going to clean it up. Now the bottom of the map, Das looking for a fight. OSP not giving him one. He does manage to clean up one of Math Blob's shuttles on this side. But as it currently stands, OSP is looking pretty content to just hold their ground and collect their win in a little bit. They are taxing the ANS light assets, making sure they cannot make a play for any of the points securing their back caps against any potential aggression there. The mines are good. If there is any little ship that is sent around the map, it will have to clear those first and then sneak onto a point. And as it currently stands, OSP leading in the sensor warfare department, they're going to find anything that ANS attempts to push here. Just going to watch and see how the game will try and develop. 
Still not completely out of it, though. ANS can make plays and get themselves back into this. That said, OSP is testing the awareness of them, seeing if they can sneak a ship onto the A point. It is going to be locked. Let's see. All right, over here, we're going to see Party Drift lazily around this corner, getting that beam just out of range right now. Check that range bracketing. We should see a beam kick on any second. Now, there it is. Math Blob going to get cooked here in a moment by that beam. There goes the drive. Should see the rest of this thing grayed out in a moment, watching the light reactor take some hits. 450 just for good measure, but this is going to be a very dead shuttle. There we are. Knocked out, keeping the A point neutral. So, OSP bleeding a asset or two around the battle space. Still, four shuttles lost is nothing compared to the five Corvettes that the ANS has lost. Much more expensive in that department. Kind of a very uh, passive game played right now from ANS. They need to decide what angle they are going to push and how they want to get themselves back into this game. Recognizing the situation that they are in, they're just going to start bleeding more and more assets unless they start making a play soon. Axford's now starting to open up on one of the bulk raiders, meaning in turn firing against one of these Axfords. So, a bit of a capital war here, although these are at fairly long ranges. Let's see, that's about 7.57 7 kilometers ish, given around there. So. A couple of these shots will end up missing or just otherwise deflecting, lightly absorbed by the Axford. Axford, so long as the components do not fall below that 75% mark, can fully repair. Still going to see two bulk freighters coming out to play, trying to pick off the Axford that's wandered maybe a little bit out of cover and into the wrong neighborhood. Let's see if there's any other assets coming out to play. Monitor Ball just playing his game over here, keeping the area locked down from that avenue, allowing these bulkers to skirmish a little bit here. Axford taking it on the nose and giving some return fire here. We're seeing the front thrusters getting knocked out here on the bulk freighter going to make it a little harder to maneuver and get back into cover here as it's drifting lazily away while its autoloaders recycle. Big missile strike coming over on the other side here as Vassal attempts to attack Mini, but it looks like Mini deflects most of that. A little bit of light damage issue to some non-essential components. Rapid lockers can just be knocked out for no cost. You're really just paying for the team there. That said, uh, Vastal approaching the sensor range here of this bulk freighter. Let's see what he wants to do about that. May have to reposition. As a missile player, you never want to be caught and found out, especially when your sensor assets are being taxed. Let's see, none of them have been detected yet, though. So I believe this is a Ithaca. Yes, Ithaca can struggle to detect smaller assets on the edge of its radar range. However, once they get to about that six or seven kilometer liner, should be in frontline range. Yeah, we should see. Does Vestal have radars on these? Actually, no, I do not believe that they do. Let's do a quick check. Nope, nope, and oh, one of them does have a frontline. Most likely is shut off. That said, here comes some more size twos. And just a little bit low. Oop, Das has thrown... Oh, no, Das has disconnected. Oh, that's unfortunate. So somebody has inherited the ships there. Let's take a look who got them. Uh, Sunflower Girl is now the solo front line for the ANS, commanding the triple Voxel and the Axford pair over here. So they're going to have to pull double duty. Let's take a look. Uh, Vastal, one of these I know had a radar. Which one is it? Uh, is it you... I think it's the leftmost one. Here we go. Yeah, this has a radar. However, we're seeing the radar is turned off to reduce signature size there. So we're going to see if any missiles are able to be thrown out here. Mini getting beamed here, getting maybe a little bit too aggressive, pushing around the corner and walking into beam range as the natural guard here is going to cook down this liner. Battle short is held. Here we go. Here's the decisive engagement that Anna has been looking for. You can see Vastal swinging around the corner as the reactor bloom goes off there. CLs as well coming in from below. Sunflower Girl deciding to come out and play. Just going to see this thing get royally torched here. Still, though, OSP a little bit ahead in the cap department, so oh, the ANS is really going to need to take capital victories like this and leverage them into a favorable position. I see a big size 2 missile strike coming in from behind here. Let's watch these impacts fly, smacking through this thing, really deciding that engagement. Like I said, you want your frontliner fleets to engage the enemy first, then missile players make their decisive swings here in the fights. That said, with the beam locked on target, this thing was going to be dead long before it got missiled. Extra missiles for good measure here. Possibly overkill, but hey, better overkill than underkill. This thing is going to burn down here. See, party over here has battle short of the beam for a long while. There is going to have to repair that. Unfortunately, this does mean that the beam does not have really battle short potential anymore in this game, as it will cook itself if they try that again. Don't want to have your beams redded out when you really need them. All right, we see a torpedo strike going off here towards the A point as ANS attempts to make a play while the OSP team was a little distracted with the backfield there. Still, many overwatching assets going to be punishing this. We watch as the ship attempts to wander onto the A point. Will they manage to get the cap this time? It is going to be very close. They're holding onto it just barely. ANS does secure the A point. That is their play to make themselves back into this game. Party, unfortunately, giving all of their Corvettes for that at the very end. Relegated to just two defensive beam destroyers watching the natural points here. Bastal using this opportunity to send some rain, seeing all the projectiles flying in here onto the A point. It's now OSP's turn to move forward and attempt to make a cap play as they will have to eventually. 
So points are fairly tied up for the moment as we're getting about to the halfway point of the game. That A point is going to decide things now as you have you to dislodge your opponent from one of these points. Poaching. Oh, sorry. I do love the commentators when they can offer a little bit of advice or things that I do miss, so I appreciate everyone in the channel for that. We see some command missiles coming out now against Math Blob. The Zany Clove is going to have its PD tested here. These are command guidance, so as long as that track is held in good quality, I think this is just on Spyglass, judging by how much this is jumping around, so high likelihood that these are going to miss. Look at these missiles wavering around, that poor track quality, having a bad time there. That we're going to see, oop, at the last second, these turning off. Where are those going? Interesting. Well, that's going to be a deflection then. They most likely lost their track at the last second. There we go. Yeah, just seeing them deflect off into the abyss. You we'll see some now missiles headed towards the little quartet of monitors over here that are pushing up a little bit. They have been scanned by, I believe, the parallax from Sunflower Girl, who's getting shot at and deciding to exchange some firepower here. Let's see. Down at the bottom of the map, uh, the not Task Force Birch going to be lumbering around looking for anything it can. We're going to see a multi-mission tug attempting a bombing run on one of the natural point defenders here. One of party's last ships in this game. It does have active decoy out. However, these are command validated. Let's see if these are good. No jamming, I believe, to counter. Defender's going to try and deflect some of these. They will manage to shoot down two, but two are going to find their way into the central stack there. Birthing is readed out. Not essential, but the CIZ does take a hit. There is a reactor bloom over on the A point, briefly jamming everyone's sensors. All right. Engagement on the front line is going on now. Bow on Sunflower Girl is taking on this quartet of monitors. Some of them looking pretty wounded already. C90s and T30s getting knocked out there. That is going to be bad if they want to keep up the sustained firepower. Yeah, through the C90s being dropped down here. Goes to show that 450 to the snoot is not something you want to be eating for a long period of time. Yeah. Monitor ball, while it is kind of dangerous with the plasma potential to strip off the front side armor here. A little hard to tell due to the paint scheme, but we can see there's some plasma damage here, opening the ship up to the lighter calibers, 250 and 100 mil respectively. Still, flank attack coming out now as Mr. Meanie comes around the corner here and is going to hit the broad side of this Axford with some 450 and 250. Here's the second plasma volley as the front line kind of commits and engages. Vastal making the missile plays here. Now that the engagement has happened, we'll see just how these monitors are going to respond to this. Monitors do have some pavises, although we will see if they are enough. A couple of grazers scattered into the mix here as well. Let's watch and see where these goes. Nothing is jamming it currently. A bunch of these size 2s going to be trimmed out by those grazers, like we said. But some of them are going to find their way home, deciding a bit more of this engagement as the guns are once again redded or grayed out on the monitor blob, which is getting heavily taxed here in this frontline fight. Lovely missile play there. Just supporting your frontline is what you want to be doing as a missile player. I love seeing that. Speaking of supporting the front line and other things down below, we're going to see a little bit of this development as some size 2 missiles are going to be intercepted here by the AMMs of the multi-mission tug. Math Blob not skipping on the budget there. They have burned out their jammer, which is a bit of a concern, and they have used up all their AMMs. Bastol may try another taxing salvo against that, or we might see the CLs sweep down low and try and clean that up. C point under threat a little bit here as party is currently doing a good job of screening with this beam destroyer, but it is being shot up by this multi-mission tug, so they'll have to clean that up. A point under contestion right now as ANS has managed to drift a shuttle onto it. So make the smart plays here. Distracting party's beam destroyer, which overwatched the A point with this aggression from down below, now means that ANS does not have anything currently aimed at the A point. We should see a cap here unless there's a very fast play made. This is a basic only, so you can knock this thing out quite easily with missiles. Let's see if they arrive in time. I think they're going to be a little too late. No, the CMD missiles, unfortunately, tasked towards the ship on the bottom of the map instead of covering the A point. OSP is going to secure themselves a third cap here, putting ANS on the back foot. Frontline fight continues to develop as the monitor ball here is going to be taking some hits into the side there. A couple of the lower, yeah, the lower side of this ship getting knocked. The monitor ball does not want to engage against a group of 450 Axfords like this. They want to be teaming up with their bulk freighters and trying to burn down one of them. As we saw earlier, they were able to get some shots in, but OSP currently just giving ground, getting themselves a cap advantage. Down low, we're going to see once again the CMD missiles. Looks like they mostly missed. Still, maybe a hit or two actually here, as this ship does look like it is pretty torn up. May have been from the earlier missile strikes, though. There's only so much we can catch right now. Anyways, B point under threat as Math Blob has consolidated. The two multi mission tugs are currently aggressing towards the point now. Hardy does have a beam destroyer, but like we said, this thing earlier had its beam kind of cooked down. Looks like it is just holding his beam on the wrong angle here to engage these ships. They are covered under jamming for their approach, so Sunflower Girl will not be able to fire anything at them. Over on the front line, more plasma is being exchanged, kind of seeing the OSP held behind this rock here by the moment. And watch as more missiles fly down below. A little bit of development now as we're getting into the later half of the game. We're going to see these CLs now engaging in a bit of a fight against a lone bulker down here. Spadicey going to get hit from the flank here by missiles unless he's careful. 
see a bunch of those shots punching through the side armor there, possibly overpinning. I believe that is firing AP instead of the HE you want to be hitting these with. Here come the AMMs as size twos are on target. A couple of them weaving off there. I believe that was just a sunflower bloom of missiles. You can see one of them finding their way home into the stack launcher in the back there. Non-essential, but still nice to get rid of so you can do better high explosive damage split across the essential compartments. Should see the switch over to HE in a moment. Firing all the little guns you possibly can down here, trying to deflect some of this. These CLs are not bow on. Instead, they are engaging against two bulk freighters down there. DD getting torped. All right, let's take a look over here. Yeah, torpedo run is good. Math Blob sensing any weakness and just lumbering around the corner. Lazy torpedo strike flies and finds its way home. This destroyer is not going to be in the game for very long if a follow-up strike occurs. These reactor brought down to 1% there. Then the Dragonfly Drive completely knocked out. Yeah, not much left for these things. By firing AP at my, possibly just a Miss Micro. We do know that uh, Sunflower, I believe, is one of the newer players and is also managing two fleets right now. So could it be they just are not familiar with the fleet that they have inherited or have got other concerns? So <laughs> minor errors you can correct as you develop more of your play style. We do try and be too hard on people, especially someone who has just inherited a fleet they are unfamiliar with. Scalor just stuck behind this rock, continuing to exchange a bit of frontline firepower here. You can see if Sunflower is able to just continue holding this ground or make a developing play. So, points fairly close here. ANS did manage to give themselves a early lead uh, once they finally got, well, sort of a mid game lead once they got that. Torpedo tug for Math Blob going to be taxed here. Vastal finally landing the CMD shots that they've been looking for this whole game. Party may be going to be able to put this thing back together. Has two restores, so can fix a Dragonfly and Reactor. I believe that the Focus Particle Accelerated, they don't quite have enough power to run, but I could be wrong on my numbers. I know you need the secondary reactor for something in these, I just don't remember the exact numbers. Anyways, going to look down here, seeing the CLs now, unfortunately getting hit in the broadside here. A lot of the systems here going down. We're seeing the bullseye has been knocked out along the Mark 64. So, fortunately, these ships uh, do not have fire orders. I believe that they do not have radar lock on those ships there, possibly just out of range. Hard to tell on the exact angles. Let's take a look over here. Going to see some size twos as well being sent against that, trying to cover the flank there. Yep. Destroyer here continuing to be shot at. Multi-mission tug down here. It did take a hit earlier, but it's still in the game. That C-30 HE rounds keeping this ship honest. Its beam is back online. They're fixing the CIC now, unfortunately. Ooh, that's going to hurt. So because of the own... Well, you have to choose now. Do you repair the reactor here and keep the ship on only oxygen? Or do you pick the CIC and try and just have it maneuver? Without the big reactor or the small reactor, you're not going to be able to fire this beam. So actually, I believe you need the big reactor for the beam. Huge size two strike. Yep, we're going to see a time on target strike here, attempting to hit two different angles at once, taxing all of the PD in the world. Going to be keeping this thing pinned under a rock, trying to salvage the situation for the CLs. Going to watch as these loop lazily around. See some chaff clouds here popped, although a bunch of those are against the rock, so they will not work. Wham, finding their way home now, starting to do some damage here. No AMMs left in this liner, I believe. We're just going to see it give its last hurrah, attempting to throw a decoy container out. Chaff Cloud does seduce some of them. Decoy container as well. Could have been worse, but a couple of these are going to find their way home. Yep, there's a bunch of redded out and grayed out components on this liner suddenly. So deciding a bit of the engagement, CLs just need to press the advantage and attack down there. Seeing over here on the front line, Spadice's other bulk freighter getting shot up a little bit. Bit of an error here firing the AP rounds. Most likely they just do not know the situation that they're facing off or just are not quite aware of the armor thinness of bulk freighters. Only 20 centimeters on these, meaning you can use HE all day against them. So looking at the C point now being capped as Math Blob pushes up here, knowing that they have got that destroyer disabled and keeping it that way with continuous HE 100 millimeter fire. OSP looking towards getting that four cap. Still a fairly tight game for most of this, despite the taxing of the ANS cap fleet very early on and then kind of the lacking awareness. OSP is playing with a four to three player advantage right now, though, so we can't be too hard on them. So Sunflower just lazily drifting around the map here. No raider drives in these, so they will not accelerate too fast, but still able to keep themselves oriented towards the enemy, exchanging 450 whenever they can. I believe that, no, they cannot see this fleet currently as the jamming is holding them down there. Goes to show the lack of scouting can be hell on your front line if you are playing against a fleet of small escort class ships like the monitors who are able to hide their reduced radar signatures behind jamming. It's actually very smart here, keeping the radar signatures off in order to hide them. Now we're starting to see a shot or two being fired out as the jamming cooks off there. Top of the map, B point is being aggressed on. Yep, looks like uh, party's destroyers here. Just unfortunately, that have been disarmed. No way to repair that beam. Just trying to deflect the aggression here. Possibly going for a cap point win if they can manage to sneak around the map. Maybe the CLs. It looks like they're instead of throwing in the towel, recognizing the situation, just saying, nope, we can't quite make this a win with the time afforded to us. So that's going to be GG called there. All right, we're just going to see uh, if they want to throw in the towel. Going to declare this uh, OSP victory.
There we go. That is going to be the game. I've been Nickaboy Blue, and that was Tombstones.